Welcome uh, to the weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, where each week we attempt to bring a topic of interest that you can actually incorporate in your life, something that you can use and not a lecture. I'm Jim Ellermeyer, I'm a behavioral health therapist, and today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my left would be... My name is Sophia, I'm a physician assistant student at Chatham University. And on my right... And my name is Maria, I'm a physician assistant student from St. Francis University. Absolutely, absolutely. So today we're uh, beginning, we're continuing our discussion, our experience explanation and review of 12-step uh, recovery. And as a disclaimer, I want everyone out there to know that I do not represent any 12-step recovery group organization or speak to them. However, what 12-step recovery is about, Sofa, is about a change in your thoughts and a change in your actions. Okay, it's about this psychic change, Maria. It's just not wishing and hoping that something can happen mm -hmm. or waiting for something to happen. So what we do is we take action and effort and then we behave our way into thinking and behavioral change, okay? And what 12-step recovery also involves, SOFA, is involving some spiritual connection with uh, the divine or greater whatever. That it's something that you, an understanding of your own, which is a great, wonderful spiritual experience. It's a, it's a real journey. So what we're talking about here today is steps 8, 9, and 10. If you've watched the previous episodes, you'll know that steps 4 through 9 are the action steps. And in step 8 is where we've uh, made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. So what we're doing is we're going with heartfelt Heartfelt, heartfelt kindness and a heartfelt desire to make things right with people, okay? So what we want to do is make a, make a list of these. And normally what we do is, Sophia, is we go back to the four-step list, the people who are on that resentment, fears, and sex list. Remember that, Maria? Mm -hmm. Sure. So we look at those, and we also, we also look at others. Are there people in your life that you perhaps uh, would make amends to? Would make amends mm -hmm. to? That I'd look back at, yes. Are there people in your life where you feel that it would ease your heart and your soul and take a stone out of you to to, to make amends to? Absolutely. Right. To make your journey through life just a little bit lighter, Maria? Yep. Absolutely, <laughs> sure. Have you ever been in a grocery store where you've been rolling a cart up and you see somebody coming down the other way who hasn't seen you yet and you conveniently made an exit? I have. You have? Mm -hmm. Has that happened to you, Sophia? Yes, it has. Absolutely, for sure. Or at one time when I was out there in my addiction world, I thought the caller ID may have been the greatest invention that ever ever was made. Mm -hmm. So you can you, you can choose to make a call. We talk about we talk about choices all the time. So however, in the words of my uh, good friends the Moody Blues, open all the shutters on your windows, unlock all your doors, wipe away the cobwebs from your memories, no secrets anymore. How would you like to be how would you like to be free? I would love and it. And carry no mm -hmm. secrets and carry carry nothing around. Carry no guilt and shame, no regret. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that happens in your life, and I'm hoping that happens in everyone's life as often. That's a pathway to depression and anxiety, is it not? It is. Absolutely, and it's a depression to, to self. And a lot of what the, a lot of what this is, Maria, is not only not only practicing loving kindness toward others. It's originally to practice loving and kindness for yourself to start a relationship with someone who we've we nearly evaded through all those years, and that's the creator, and that's that's also us too. So, uh, Sophie, we could cross fifteen universes. 15 universes, and we could never find a person more more worthy of loving kindness than yourself and everyone out there watching. Absolutely, for sure. So we, so, and this is why it is so important to have a sponsor, someone who's familiar with working these steps, who's gone down this path before you, uh, to, to direct you and guide you on making this list. Okay. So number nine is made direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so when to injure others. And this is where a qualified uh, sponsor can certainly help you in your life, because quite often there's, there's people that remember, we made direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Okay, let's say that uh, I had done something heinous in the past that would that would put me in jail. Okay, however, at the time, let's say I have a partner, I have children, I have people to support, people count on me in their lives. Would it be purposeful for me to admit that and go to jail, go to prison, and if if necessary, absolutely, we would. However. Would it be fair to those other people? Would it harm them? 
if I, if, if I was put out of their life. Yes. Absolutely. Now, this is a uh, situation that unfortunately happens way too often. Let's say that I was having an affair with your friend, a friend of yours. Okay. So I I want to make these things right in my life. I want to make this all right. So you're you're a happy person. Okay. And you, you this is one of your best friends in your whole life. Everything's ended. Everything's done. Would it be purposeful for me to come to you and end a relationship that you had with a good friend? Yeah. And possibly in a relationship with us. Let's say that in the past, uh, you and I had been involved, and I had just used you shamelessly, shamelessly throughout 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 our time together. It's been it's been a number of years since uh, since we last saw each other. So I, I feel I feel a real strong need for me to go and make things right with you. Okay. So, however, I find out that in that period of time, you've you've gotten a partner, you've got married, and you have children, and you have a successful life and a happy career. Would it be purposeful or beneficial for me to go to you and reopen that old wound yeah. and open that mm -hmm. life? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. So, in this way, then, how do we do it? How do we how do we do that? Let's say, uh, in my own life, my mother was the absolute last friend I had. The ad, the last friend I had, and she wasn't happy. So, although she has passed into the greater beyond at this time, uh, could I do? Could I have done anything for that woman? Could I have given her fur coats, diamond rings, tri trips around the world, and said, "Okay, when we're even"? Okay, that, that's not possible. Not possible. So, what we do is we make living amends. We make living amends to every single person we meet and to the universe, do we not? We try to we try to live our life with dignity and respect and respect the dignity of others, correct? Okay, so the idea is so let's let's put this scenario on. I come to you as with, with a sincere and open heart to make things right. I come in I come into your home or I come into your office, I come and see you, and you pick up a hammer and chase me down the street. And start throwing it at me, okay? Mm -hmm. Did that amends work, would you think? No. No? What do you think, Sophia? Mm -hmm. No. So who went there? Who went there? Whose inventory is this? Is it his, this person's? Is it yours or is it mine? Yeah, it's it mine, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I went there with a sincere and willing heart to make things right, did I not? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And just the simple fact that you did not accept that, does that make the amends any less powerful? No. The idea is to is to bring that stuff out from me into the light, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you go up to someone with a sincere and willing heart, the simple fact that they chose not to accept it doesn't mean that that wasn't a successful amend. Right. Okay. Absolutely. So what we do then is uh, we finish the action step. So we're going to talk about one, one um, maintenance step, okay, which is number 10. And that's continued to take personal inventory and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. Quite often I'll hear individuals uh, say that they have to do another four-step inventory or on their 15th or 16th one. And I think, why? What happened to the first one? So the idea is that every night is self-evaluation. And, of course, not everyone does it every night. Before we go to bed, we review our day. Were we selfish or dishonest in anything that we did that day? Is there something that, that we need to make amends? Did we, did, we, did we treat people with courtesy and respect, or did we disrespect people? What type, of, what, type of, what type of person were we that day? Did I try to do the right thing? And quite often, then we don't. So the thought here is to not beat yourself up about it. However, to make a resolution and intention to make things to make things right with that person or individual. Would that be successful? So remember the whole idea of 12 step recovery is about a change in your thoughts and a change in your actions. If you review them, the only step that that mentions addiction is the first step. Is the first one. Then then it starts to get to work on yourself. Correct? They all start to get to work on yourself. And uh, my hope is that everyone out there will continue to take inventory of their life and treat each other Treat each other with courtesy and respect. So remember, as uh, the Buddha says, uh, the highest uh, being a compassionate being is the highest form of enlightenment, right? Mm -hmm. So being compassionate, I can be compassionate to you. You're my friend, right? right? Or you can be compassionate to your dog, or you can be compassionate to your sister, brother, sister, cousin, whoever. Okay? Great compassion is showing is showing compassion to the universe, to showing it to everyone you meet. Okay, it doesn't mean that we can we can help everybody, but we can certainly hold them in the light. We can certainly hold them in our thoughts. Can we not? Definitely. Mm -hmm. Any uh, any thoughts on these uh, three particular subjects that we discussed, Sophia? No, I just think it's really important to be able to have good intentions and keep the things that you want to amend in mind and work on them at your pace. 
Ms. Maria? Um, yeah, I think it's definitely important to not get discouraged if you're not completely on track and you don't do everything right because you can just um, take the inventory and then correct yourself for the future. Absolutely, and that's the idea of the, doing the evaluation at the end. So at the end of every uh, podcast here, what we do is we ask people to contact the Seclair website. Any comments, any questions, any criticisms, we invite all. We invite all and we answer all. Correctly, so the so what we do is also uh, Miss Sophie is we give a free prescription at the end of every podcast. We uh, fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Mm-hmm. Unplug your television and take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we ask you to fish without bait. A uh, no expect no unreasonable expectations in your life. And as always, uh, your assignment for today is be good to yourself and others. Thank you so much for joining us today. Mm-hmm.